All right, so last minute I decided to split this video into two because we don't always cover this in one day, but in a block schedule we have time, um, but in a normal schedule we wouldn't. So, boom, split. All right, let's get rolling again. The second half of 7.5 now with Tangent. I know I promised Tangent in the first video, but I decided last minute. Audible. Cool. Um, so, again, we're going to be using our 30, 60, 45, 90, you know, quadrantals, um, but we're going to use them with Tangent functions, and and those that form is a little bit different. So, it looks kind of nasty, too. Um, we want to verify though before we use it, you know, just because it's, we don't want to just take this as like fact, like, okay, we got to show it ourselves, right? With something that we already know. Um, we want to verify that formula, um, that it's tangent of A plus tangent of B over one minus tangent of A tangent of B. Cool. Or alpha, beta, whatever you want to do. Mr. Henderson's about to pop in here. So I'm strapping up with the mask, you know? All right. Look like Mortal Kombat now in this video. Cool. You guys probably don't know what that is. All righty. Actually, you might. Mortal Kombat, that's still relevant, isn't it? I think so. I think it is. All right. So we're going to use our sum for sine and cosine formulas uh, to derive this, okay? So we know that tangent is equal to sine over cosine. So we can, we can then infer or conclude that sine of alpha plus beta over cosine of alpha plus beta would also be equal to then tangent of alpha plus beta. So let's go ahead and expand our sine and cosine. I'm going to pause the video to do that to save some time. All right, so this next move is a little bit a little bit weird, okay? So we know, so we've got it all expanded here, right? Um, now we know we can multiply numerator and denominator by the same thing, still mathematically equivalent, right? Because that's like multiplying by one, and multiplying by one doesn't change anything. But what form of one, right? Because we usually do some kind of creative form of one or a clever form of one. What the heck are we going to use in this case? Well, if you think back to um, our the one of the, the last problem I think in the in the last video where we ended up getting tangent from sine over cosine, right? That's what we're kind of looking for here. Now, if I were to um, divide everything here, multiply everything by one over, um, if I were to multiply everything by one over cosine of alpha, cosine of beta, the equivalent of dividing each individual part, each individual term, by cosine of alpha, cosine of beta, look at what would happen, right? Our cosine of betas would cancel, okay? Um, our cosine of alphas would cancel, um, and then I'd be left with a lot of like sine over cosines, which we know are tangent, okay? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to rewrite this one um, with a little bit of space, and then I'm going to write it with the cosine of alpha over cosine of beta. All right, so now everything is going to get multiplied by 1 over cosine of alpha, cosine of beta. You can think of it as multiplying by this. Right? I'm multiplying this whole thing by one, essentially. So I'll have cosine of alpha here and cosine of beta. And there we have it. Now it's time for some cancellations, right? So that's gone. These are gone. That turns to one. Um, let's see here. I think we're good there. And then we've got, uh, boom, gone. All right, I like it. So now, what do we have here? Um, if I were to clean this up a bit, uh, this up here, that becomes tangent of alpha plus, and over here I've got tangent of beta. This became one right here, minus, and then I've got um, sine, over, sine of alpha over cosine of alpha, so that's, tangent of alpha, and then I've got beta as well, so then times tangent of beta. And look at that, we have verified it's legit. It's too legit to quit, so we also have a tangent difference formula as well, because we just cannot quit. Isn't that right, Mr. Hendrickson? That's right. That's right. Okay, let's continue. Faux show. All right, so we've got our two different addition and subtraction formulas, right? Um, you could see the similarities, really just the uh, the, the flip-flop of the plus or the minus, right? Um, good to notice those patterns help you helps you to uh, to commit that to memory. It's often uh, easier if you just remember these because then your brain can work a little bit faster through them. If you're on a sheet of paper, that's another thing too, but, uh, you know, in the event that you got to recall them, you know, if you're in a job interview and somebody asks, well, hey, can you derive <laughs> the tangent sum for me? Like, I mean, come on, right? That happens every time. No, it doesn't. Didn't even happen for my job. All right, let's continue. So we have the same kind of process here as the last problems. Um, we're just going to find our, our wonderful, wonderful uh, 
nice trig values uh, to work with here. And uh, one thing we want to point out, okay? I'm gonna jot this down. What what tangent, tangent of what angle do you think is the most pain to work with? Well, that would be tangent of 30. Avoid tangent of 30, right? That is root three over three. Do you want fractions in fractions? No. You want stacks on stacks of cash, but you don't want fractions in fractions. Isn't that right, Mr. Henderson? That's, that's I'm just popping it over you every time. All right. 100%. Avoid that at all costs. Generally, you can. I remember learning that my first time. I was like, this was terrible to work with. Why am I doing this? And I'm like, oh, yeah, it's just avoid 30. Okay. Jot that down. Remember it. America. Okay. Let us continue. So what values could we use here? How about 135 and 60? So this will become tangent of 135 plus 60. And just so we have it here handy, we'll keep that up as we set it up this first time. Okay. And then we'll try and go from memory from there. So this is my alpha. This is my beta. Plug and chug. Let's go. Uh, so we got tangent of 135 plus tangent of and then with 60, um, oh, that's just wonderful, isn't it? It's just root three. Or sorry, I'm, I'm going too far. Let's put 60 there. Sorry. Oh, my goodness. I'm jumping ahead of step. I'm just getting excited. I'm thinking of stacks on stacks. Uh, let's see here. 135 and then tangent 60. Cool. Now let's go ahead and evaluate this now that I've got it all set up. So tangent of 135, that's just one. Um, and is that positive or negative? That's second quadrant, so that's going to be negative one. Be careful with that. That's right. Um, let's see here. For 60, that would just be root three. Okay. So far, so good. And then I got one minus negative one, and then again, root three. Okay. So now let's clean this up. So I've got negative one plus root three over uh, one, and then that's going to become positive root three plus root three. Okay. Woo. Now this is taking you back to algebra one. Do you remember what to do? You can't leave a radical in the denominator. I don't know why. No one knows why. I've asked every single math teacher here who came up with that rule. And even the smartest of smarts uh, cannot tell me. Um, but we do it, you know, because we just blindly follow the rules. All right. So we're going to multiply by my conjugate, which is 1 minus root 3. I got that from looking at my denominator. And now we can simplify. I'm going to scooch, scooch over here. So in, the denom or in this one, we're going to have uh, negative 1 plus root 3 times 1 minus root 3. So I'd have what? Negative 1. Um, let's see here if I remember how to FOIL. <laughs> plus root three, and then I'd have plus root three, and then minus root nine, which is three, all over. And for this one, I know it's gonna be one, and then minus root nine, which is three. The middle ones, the one times root three and the one times negative root three are gonna cancel out. That's the whole point of multiplying by the conjugate. And we can simplify a little further. So I'm gonna have negative four uh, plus two root three, all over negative two, and I, I gotta keep on scooching. We can simplify everything by dividing by two, um, or even by negative two, let's say, so that would end up being uh, two minus root three. Okay. I got into a panic there, guys. Thought it was, thought I made a sign error, but it's, it's, uh, it's perfecto, it's perfect, it's wonderful. Next example. We had ourselves a brief intermission there. We had a, a lunch warm up, you know. We're in the lunch area here doing math vids. What you got for lunch over there? What's your snack? Is that white cheddar Cheez Its? White cheddar Cheez Its and some carrots. And some carrots. A balanced, a balanced diet there. All right. Evaluate as an exact value. Um, and we've got ourselves, sometimes you'll see it in a tangent of negative 17 pi over 12. <laughs> I'll throw up looking at that. Um, so best to convert to degrees in these cases because you're going to see uh, the addition subtraction of your nice trig values a little bit easier in degrees than you will in radians. So I would highly suggest that. Now for this one, um, again, avoid our 30 degree reference angles. How about negative 345 would work for that, right? So tangent of negative 300 plus 45. So I'm using the sum formula. Um, so let's let's 
populate that sum formula, shall we? So I'm going to have tangent of negative 3 hana plus tangent of 45 over 1, and then it's minus for this one. When it's uh, subtraction, remember the plus and minus they switch. I'd have tangent of negative 300 times tangent of 45. All right, time to evaluate. Let's do it. So for tangent of negative 300, that's all the way whipped around to the uh, first quadrant with a 60 degree reference. That is going to be root 3 uh, plus, and then I'd have positive 1 over 1 minus, and then again we have root 3, and then we have uh, positive 1. Okay, so I have, let's clean it up. Coolio, I like it, good stuff. Now we're going to multiply by the conjugate. So I'd do uh, 1 plus root 3 and 1 plus root 3. Lovely. I am going to, because you know it takes a little while, I'm going to just pop all the way back up here. Start again. All right, so I'd have uh, root 3 times 1 is root 3. And then root 3, let's see here, um, plus, and then root 3 times root 3 is um, root 9, which is 3. And then we have 1 times 1, which is 1, and 1 times root 3, which is 1 root 3, all over. And then we have 1 times 1 is 1 minus, uh, minus root 9, which is just minus 3. Cool. So we have, let's see here, 4 plus 2 root 3 all over negative 2. And if I divide everything by negative 2, I get negative 2 minus root 3. And we are good to go. Cotton Eye Joe. I don't know. What's that old song? It just came to me in the mind. Where did you come from? Where did you? I don't know. Good stuff. There, that's what I'm thinking. It was Erickson for the win. There we go. All right. Example three. Feel free to, uh, if you need to, take a look and, and pause. Let me let me zoom out here a little bit in case you need to, to jot any of that down. Woo! All right. Okay, let's go. All right, evaluate tangent of 3 pi over 4 minus theta when tangent of theta is equal to 1 fourth. Okay, this seems bizarre, but let's just go with it, okay? So... Uh, I got tangent of 3 pi over 4. 3 pi over 4 is actually a nice one, right? Um, so that's lovely, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to expand this portion right here, okay? Let's see what it looks like. So I've got tangent of 3 pi over 4 minus tangent of theta over 1 my plus <laughs> Woo! tangent of 3 pi over 4 tangent of theta. Okay, so I'm just, I'm just, boom, setting this thing apart, right? Now, we're expanding it, rather, and taking it apart. I think it's a better math term. Now I can evaluate everything. Well, tangent of 3 power 4, that's in my second quadrant. Uh, that is, what, negative 1? Yeah, it's negative 1. All right, so I'm going to get negative 1 minus, and then I know tangent of theta is 1 fourth, and then 1 plus, and then negative 1 and one fourth there. Okay, so this really actually made things a whole lot easier. I didn't have to think about it. It was just given to me, right? And now let's do a little bit of cleanup. So I'll bring it back up here. I get uh, negative one minus one fourth. So I can do negative four over four minus one fourth. That's negative five over four over. And then I've got uh, one minus one fourth. So four over four minus one fourth. That would be three over four. Feel free to take a sec to let that digest, okay, uh, before moving on. Okay, that is that is the correct one there. Um, now what I can do, ooh, I love this move, whoop, multiply by the reciprocal, right? So I'd have negative five over four times four over three, um, and I end up with negative five thirds. Dunzo, I like it, very good, fantastic stuff. Uno mas, one, more example. Mm-hmm. I think we got, ooh, that was a little voice crack there. Did you guys get that? We got just enough time for it. All right, suppose tangent of alpha is equal to two over three and tangent of beta is equal to one-fifth, where beta, and both alpha and beta, 
are in that first quadrant there, okay? Um, and notice that beta is going to be a smaller angle because that's the uh, opposite is 1 over 5 as opposed to 2 over 3. Uh, we want to find tangent of alpha plus beta. All right. That doesn't, that doesn't seem too bad at all. It's all in the first quadrant. Um, now, if I were to expand tangent of alpha plus beta, that'd be tangent of alpha plus tangent of beta over 1 minus tangent of alpha tangent of beta. Now, there's no other trig functions here, so I don't even need to really draw these triangles because I already have my values. I'm just plugging them in. So I'd have 2 thirds plus 1 fifth over 1 minus, and then we got uh, 2 thirds times 1 fifth. If you're having trouble with doing these fractions by hand, um, feel free to ask, you know, a sibling or a neighbor that's in like fourth grade or something like that. They could probably give you a hand working with fractions since you have forgotten in all the years, you know. Um, so let's see here. We've got, watch me make a mistake with fractions now. Um, so this one's going to be a common denominator of 15. That would mean I'd have 10 plus uh, 3 over 15 all over. And then here I've got 15 over 15. I'll do this, 15 minus um, 2 all over 15, right? This is going to become 2 fifteenths right there when I multiply it together. Cool. So now, um, simplify further, I've got uh, 13 over 15 all over, and then that would be 13 whoa, over 15, and anything divided by itself or you can multiply by the reciprocal. If you didn't notice it yet, it's going to be 1. Dunzo. Awesome. Fantastic. America freedom. Rock and roll. Stay hydrated. And follow River Dog Jenny on the gram. See ya.